you know, this space in this industry where 80 to 90% of them are ran by people that speak Spanish, but all these events that are so big in this industry, you know, I told one of my friends, I was like, how many people do you see here at this event that speak Spanish? He said, zero. Yeah. But isn't it funny how we're going to this big conference that has thousands of people and no one's catered it to the pretty much the foundation of the industry, which is the people that speak Spanish. All right, everybody, welcome to a very special edition of In the Den. I am Bernie Olilla, and I am here with the one and only, the youngest man kicking ass in uh, the event industry right now, especially for home service people, Mr. Steven Martinez. Steven, how are you today, sir? I'm doing great, brother. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, it's our pleasure, man. As soon as we heard about the American Dream event, and we were all in because from where we're sitting, it's a great cause. It's a great event to really help represent a group of people that don't really always get the center stage, but are super prevalent in the home services industry. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that was the whole, whole the whole mission really is to help and bridge an underserved market and give them the equal opportunity that they deserve to, you know, be educated. Yeah. And for everybody out there that doesn't know about it yet, would you mind giving them a quick five, 10 seconds about what the American Dream event is? Yeah, absolutely. So the American Dream event is the largest conference for Spanish entrepreneurs. We're focusing a lot in the blue collar space. So from home service, HVAC, plumbing, construction, roofing, the whole A to Z. And, you know, we're tying in all these industries together and just helping them be educated on pretty much how to run a business successfully and, you know, achieve, quote unquote, their American dream. Yeah, man. I think it's a great cause. Like, like we were just talking about, a lot of guys, you know, uh, and even with the speakers, like you have, I think Ishmael Valdez coming, uh, Cristiano is going to be there. I know Tommy Mello is going to speak. We're going to get the opportunity to take uh, center stage two to talk to everybody out there about digital marketing. But it's a good Absolutely. event where people can kind of collaborate and get together and really share information and ideas, much like some of the other events out there. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's what we're uh, trying to kind of aim for. We want to bring the best of the best. You know, I've I've had people ask me before, they say, you know, I've noticed some of your speakers don't speak fluent Spanish. Well, then I mentioned them. I said, well, do you want to learn from someone that did one, two million that speaks Spanish or someone that does a hundred million speaks English? So obviously they're kind of like, oh, no, yeah, I want to learn from them. So, you know, that's what it's all about, bringing the best of the best. Yeah, it is the best of the best. And speaking of the best of the best, dude, you probably picked the hardest job in uh, in this kind of space, putting this event together, because we were kind of talking before we jumped on. A lot of these guys don't get too much sleep leading up to it. That's yeah. two weeks time is either the worst or the best time for them but you're having an easy time filling the spots up yeah yeah we're doing pretty good and i want to say we're doing pretty good because of the fact that no one's done this type of event before you know a lot of people have done multiple conferences events expos whatever you want to call it but it's never been catered to the spanish market so for once you know they're kind of seeing this space open up for them and this opportunity for them to come in and gain valuable knowledge so it's going good we're really excited with the the amount of attention we're getting yeah. And you're, you know, you're a younger guy too. So it's unusual to see someone, um, you know, someone your age putting on an event like this, pulling in the names they are and really being as prevalent as they are. And it just speaks to who you are as a person, your drive and the things that you're bringing to the table. So without me kind of uh, butchering it, I want to know a little bit more about you and how you got to this point, just for everybody out there in the audience, because they don't know you now, they're about to know who you are. Absolutely. Yes. I'll give you a little rundown. So I went to school in, in England. I got my bachelor's degree in business. And then during that time, that's when COVID hit. Yeah. So, you know, kind of like the world just kind of paused. Everyone was just kind of static. And we all had to go back to, to the U.S. because of the COVID rules. So I got my degree in business. And then, you know, I kind of thought to myself, I said, well, I don't want to just stay still. Like I want to be doing something right. Be proactive. And I applied for my MBA, my master's in business. I was obtaining that as well. And then at the time I was doing Instacart, which is kind of like um, like DoorDash, but you're doing groceries for people because no one could go to like Target yeah, or Walmart or anything like that. So I was doing that, you know, just hustling. And then I was going to line up an internship with marketing with Shell, with our recruiting department for the, the master's program that we had. Uh, forward a little bit, it was my buddy's birthday. And then he's like, hey, man, let's go out to a bar. I'm like, sure, it's your birthday. And then I ended up meeting my mentor at a bar at around like 2 a.m. So, you know, I had it. He was not in a suit all dressed up. I was just minding my business. You know, we start talking, you know, I'm just kind of thinking this is just a casual conversation. And, you know, he starts telling me about the blue collar space. Yeah. Starts talking about, you know, the insurance claim process, roofing, construction, um, you know, how much they did last year. It's like we did 20 million. We're about to go to Lake Charles tomorrow morning. This was when we we're in Houston. And we're going to go during Hurricane Sally Delta. Um, Laura 
and, you know, just kind of get everything set up. And I had no idea what the industry was. I didn't even know what a shingle was. And <laughs> I don't know, something about it, dude, something about it. I was like, you know what, you know, this might be a good opportunity because my perception of the American dream, I think for a lot of immigrants is education and working that nine to five to where, you know, you're in a cubicle and you have that consistent income. But I've always believed in being an entrepreneur. You know, I, I think America's run on free enterprise and people that run businesses, you know, successfully as a small business owner. So I was able to, to learn a lot from him within that industry space. And I absolutely killed it. And he was like, dude, come move to Arizona with me. I was in Scottsdale for two years. And then I just started to build this big, big Rolodex because I was a director of sales. And I had people like Tommy Mello, you know, he became good friends of mine. A lot of big players in different spaces who just became my friends, right? For me, my clients are my friends. And yeah. once I got tied in with them and created good relationships with them, I started to see you know, this space in this industry where 80 to 90% of them are ran by people that speak Spanish, but all these events that are so big in this industry, you know, I told one of my friends, I was like, how many people do you see here at this event that speak Spanish? He said, zero. Yeah. But isn't it funny how we're going to this big conference that has thousands of people and no one's catered it to the pretty much the foundation of the industry, which is the people that speak Spanish. So I saw I saw a niche there and then I started to really approach it, tackle it down. I left Arizona. I wrote my book. I started consulting businesses in Spanish construction to, you know, get organized and understand how to really, you know, scale and become next level. And then I chose to divert that into creating the conference and fast forward a year later and we're here. Yeah, man, that's that's a great story. Um, Number one. I've heard a lot of great pickup stories in my life. And that's probably one of the most interesting ones with the best twist because you meet your mentor who ultimately changes your life. And now you're changing other people's lives, right? Just by a chance meeting there, like you said. And then number two, with again, the underrepresentation of people and a lot of people do speak Spanish or are Spanish speaking or Spanish business owners, you know what I mean? So it's great. And American Dream, the name of the event itself kind of really speaks to all that, I think anyway, from where I'm sitting. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, what, the way I saw it too was, you know, my my mom cleaned houses when I was young. My mom and dad got divorced when I was like 12. So I was raised around a single mother that worked two jobs. And I used to wake up with her at like 5, 6 a.m. to help her take out the trash from offices and vacuum and all that good stuff. And I just started to kind of analyze things from a different viewpoint. And I started getting really passionate about helping the Latin community and achieve their dream. You know, like when you go to a Chinese restaurant, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a Latin guy cooking your Chinese yeah. food. If you yeah. go off and you have a Latin guy giving you a towel, if you go to valet, um, you know, someone's parking your car, you know, the list goes on, right? Who's cleaning your office, your house is nine times out of 10. It's going to be someone that's Latino. So we want to really empower these people that, you know, I want to say run a lot of, you know, the free enterprise that's going on in America and give them that opportunity to, you know, maybe not everyone's going to be able to achieve that concept, but at least just provide that educational service to where they understand it. Yeah. And what, and that's awesome. Dude. What, what are some challenges that you see them facing right now that you need to address immediately? I know every business owner has like the same set of issues, right? Not enough help, uh, not enough, you know, good data that they can use to make decisions with those kinds of things. But what specific are you seeing for the Latino community that is going to ultimately, you know, not be resolved, but addressed with a conference like yours? Um, in short, one of the main things that we want to provide is that educational value where, you know, people, in the Spanish community, we feel very kind of undermined, right? We feel like we're not good enough to be in certain places and spots because people might overlook us or not take us serious, um, you know, especially in the construction side of it. You know, a lot of people are timid. So I want to create that open space and open event to where people are free to ask questions, free to, you know, there's no such thing as a dumb question, right? But maybe they feel like they're scared to ask a question or embarrassed to. But, you know, where they can pretty much go into a space where they can learn about everything, whether it's, you know, construction, you know, roofing, garages, HVAC, whether it's real estate investment, whether it's about marketing, SEO, branding, you know, the whole A to Z, really. You know, how do you have a CRM system? The, the list goes on and on. Right. So it's about creating that that space and, you know, having them be able to to come into the event and be able to kind of kind of let it out. Yeah. And I think it's good to have those kinds of things set on your agenda to address with them. Because it also creates talking point opportunities for people amongst themselves, right? Like they're all probably experiencing a lot of the same challenges. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. To facilitate an environment like that where there's a prioritization on communication and a sense of togetherness, given the uh, the people that you're going at specifically in the Latin community. And then this opportunity for them to all kind of come together and share that stuff is awesome. Absolutely. No, thank you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the vision and objective is there. And we're very lucky to have some amazing speakers involved, sponsors, 
uh, partners, organizations that really see the vision and, you know, understand that, you know, it's bigger than us. It's about helping out, you know, the community. Like, I always like to give this example, you know, if you're in the roofing space, right, and you knock on 100 doors, all you need is one yes to file the claim and then you're set. The way I see it is, you know, if we can host this event and knock on 100 people's lives and at least change one, then we're doing something right. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And what about, so it, it's not easy to put, it's not easy to start an event, let alone pick up one that happens every year. Um, when did you kind of start thinking about this? Take take me through a little bit of that. Like you see the the challenge, right? The underrepresentation of the Latin community. You say, I'm going to do something about this because, you know, there's an opportunity here for everybody to get better. Take me through like the beginning stages of that for you. Oof, so the, the beginning stage to the whole concept in itself happened when I left Arizona. So true story, I actually gave everything to a single mother in Arizona, like my, my furniture, my couch, my TV, you know, I was like, I'm going to start fresh, I'm going back to Houston. And I started, one of the things I learned from a lot of my mentors is writing stuff down. So I started strategizing and I said, okay, this is how we're going to create the concept of what I want to do. So one of the main things that I've noticed just as an entrepreneur is that, you know, you need to find solutions to problems, right? So one of the main problems in the blue collar space, or one of the things that are always going to be consistent is people needing sales reps or 1099. So I created this recruiting service to gain that capital, to be able to allocate those sources and that finances to the next level, what I wanted to do. So I was like, you know, I already had the connections and the knowledge. I had to call my buddy and say, Hey man, I'm charging 5,000 for a recruiting campaign. We'll get you a group interview of sales reps. We'll, you know, incentivize it, give you a KPI structure it. And we'll do LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter. And I started getting some good uh, feedback on that. And then I told one of my friends, I said, because no one's going to take someone with my age serious when you're, you know, in the older stage of, of an age. So I said, let me do a, a free consultation and analysis on your brand. Let me structure everything from your sales, production, recruiting, uh, quality control. Let me do, let me look at your marketing, your traditional, your digital, your SEO, your pay-per-click, all that good stuff for free. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to say, yeah, man, go for it. So fast forward into that. When I was doing the recruiting, it was my first step into the door to be taken serious into the consulting. And then once I was in the consulting area, I was able to see how these magnificent companies operate. And I was able to apply certain concepts that I previously learned and also applied good things from different companies as well. And I said, okay, now that I'm applying all this knowledge in this space and I see an opportunity to take this knowledge into the Latino space, you know, let's just transition that. I'm bilingual, so it wasn't that hard. And then we started to focus that in there. And then I said, well, let me have a book so I have a source of credibility within the name and brand. And, you know, as a lot of my friends, you know, they have books just, you know, as a source of, of reputation, really rapport with the client. So once I had the book, then I started to transition that into the conference. And within the conference, I had a, a lot of experience because my mentor that I mentioned, he actually hosts a really big event. So I actually lived with him for like two months when he was like, hey, man, stay with me. We got like three bedrooms, save up your money and then get a place in Arizona. And he used to like pretty much have a whole breakdown of his whole business operations, his cost, how to do the event and organize it, you know, from the ticket sale to the marketing to everything. And then I applied the same concept. And then I had different friends that do different events too. like Tommy does vertical track, Hunter does roof con, April does SRC. And just, you know, just choosing stuff, right? Because every business, every idea is based on some sort of previous business and idea. Yeah. Nothing's like original. So I was just creating an idea, applying certain concepts that I liked. And then I just transitioning that into the, the Hispanic conference. But a lot of it started with the conference was, you know, relationships, networking, putting myself in front of the door, meeting a lot of people, telling them about the idea. You know, at the, be at be at the beginning, we didn't get a lot of yeses. But funny enough, now we're getting a lot of yeses. So you know, it's just kind of that wave of business, really. You know what I mean? That's unreal, dude. And that was, and now you're well north of a thousand attendees at this one, right? You expect that? Yeah. yeah. When was that first idea? Like when, like, tell me when that was. Was that like the, a, the actual conference? Yeah. When was, was that like a year, two years ago? When was it? When did you think? Yeah, it was, like, it was like two years ago. It was two years ago. And, um, you know, the way I saw everything, you know, I had a plan of action in my head already. Yeah. You know, I, you, I can't just hop into and do a conference like that. There has yeah. to be stages and levels, right? You have to build some sort of foundation, credibility source, um, you know, and again, going from the recruiting to the consulting gave me more credibility. And then going from the consulting to the book, transitioning to the Spanish market, because then people in the Spanish market took me serious because I was helping English speaking owners. Yeah. And like a nice ripple effect, I started getting testimonials, referrals. And then the art of networking just kind of came in. And I think that's one of my 
bigger skill sets. You know, sometimes, I mean, sometimes I'm in situations where I'm just like, damn, man, like I have to network today. I'm not feeling it, you know, but, I, you know, yeah. suck, it up, suck it up, drink a beer, go network, meet some people, yeah. shake some hands and, you know, tell them, you know, who I am. How can I, how can I bring value into them? But more importantly, how can we bring value into a, an untouched market? A hundred percent. I feel that like real hard, especially when you're like, man, I'm really good at networking. It's what I'm good at, but I don't know if I can do it today. Sometimes yeah. I too, dude. Um, and when you're thinking about that kind of stuff, like anytime you're embarking on some kind of new venture, whether it's, you know, selling a new product or starting a new company or launching a brand or conference, there's always like unexpected things that happen that are like, wow, that's awesome. Anything like surprise you in a good way that you might want to share? Nobody, I mean, challenges are challenges, but anything really good happened that might have, uh, that you might not have seen? Absolutely. I could tell you a funny story and it, it, it all comes down to having the courage and confidence within yourself, really, for any business. So I woke up and I said, OK, I know marketing is split into traditional and digital, right? You got your digital, the social media, your Google, you know, all that good stuff. And then traditional is, you know, your TV, your radio, newspaper, all that good stuff. So I was like, I need to partner up with a serious TV channel for the Spanish market. So I wake up in the morning, I get ready. My girlfriend's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go to Univision, which is uh, one out of the two, but I ended up getting signed up with Telemundo. So I show up to the front unannounced, no appointment, no schedule, complete cold call. I just showed up at the, at the security gate and I like quickly go to LinkedIn and I put marketing director of Univision just so I have some sort of credibility, can get a name so I can get into the door. Nice. Yeah. So this lady, however, she was like being really rude. She was just not having it. She was like, I'm sorry, you need an appointment. You know, I was like, hey, I drove two hours. I really did. I drove like 10 minutes. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, hey, I drove two hours. You know, this is for a great cause. We're doing a big event. You know, I'd love to talk to you. Maybe your director of sales, your marketing guy. I think this could be something beneficial. And she just didn't let me go. And then, you know, ended up just reversing out. And I was kind of like, man, I'm, I'm in a slump right now. And I was like, well, you know what? There's one more and, it, and they're nationwide as well. Telemundo is actually probably the biggest. I don't know why I didn't even think of them first. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? It's worth a shot. Why not? Right. I already got told one no. I just need one yes. So I go to Telemundo. Same thing. Go to LinkedIn. Find the, <laughs> the information. I go through the gate. And, you know, I'm just like, hey, I have an appointment here scheduled with, uh, with JC. I hope he doesn't see this. But if he does, he'll laugh um you know we, we're doing a, an appointment for the biggest conference for latinos and the guy was just like oh man that's awesome yeah come in go into the door and then they call jc and jc comes in and he's like he looks at me kind of confused he's like have i met you before and i'm just like no you haven't you haven't met me yet you know i've just been connected with you i've been connected with you through odyssey which is radio so radio and TV work together. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, who do you know in Odyssey? And I was like, oh, I know Val. So I had a name from radio because we signed up with radio. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm good friends with Val. Yeah, yeah, come in. Let's talk. Complete cold call. And then that was a really unexpected surprise in a good way because, you know, we just click like that. He turns out he was Colombian too, like me. We just ended up having a great conversation. He was like, man, I love what you're doing. I love the ambition. I love that you're trying to help out a community and serve them and get them educated. We're all in. Let's get this done. Consider us your sole proprietary partners for TV. So that was a that was a crazy. I just woke up and just did it, man. That's a great sales guy story. Yeah. <laughs> Love a good sales guy story. I'm gonna make sure my well, my team's gonna watch it, anyway, but they're gonna love that one too, dude. The the straight cold call, then have an appointment, and literally life changing. Yeah, man. I just go to LinkedIn, have some sort some sort of credibility. One of the things I used to do, um, so before I actually did before you apply for your MBA, you have to like do like a Zoom interview or something with like the potential recruiter that's gonna apply you as a, a potential candidate. And one of the things that's actually really good that actually is where I got that source from was you know looking them up. You know, it goes a long, long way if you look them up. So I, I just looked up that lady that one time, you know, turned out she had these activities, these hobbies and interests. So I used that to create that relationship. Same kind of analogy with the whole LinkedIn with the Telemundo thing. But yeah, that great surprise. Um, aside from that, you know, we've had a lot of amazing people and speakers, you know, that usually charge to speak. And they're doing this completely complimentary just because they see the vision and what we're doing and the potential. So it's, yeah. it's always surprising in a good way to get that sort of support from the speakers and, you know, different sponsors just coming up and messaging me. You know, it's always nice to have people believing in your vision. Yeah, it's a real murderer's row you got there too on the main stage. I saw, uh, when I saw Tommy Ishmael, 
these are people I've met. Like Tommy was just here at our office, but I've never met Ishmael or anybody in person before, but everybody knows who he is. And then you have Chris from Rhino, lots of other good people too. And I was like, damn, even I was like, I'm going to get to speak on the same stage as these guys. So you're like, you're doing it. That's, that's, that's sick, man. And when it, I like, it. yeah, I'm really excited about it too. All right. Now, Steven, when it comes to the attendees, we know the market we're going after. We know why they should come. We know the people that are going to be there. Speaking as a guy that's been to a lot of trade shows, you do see people in the Latin community at the different shows, right? So mm -hmm. there's stuff that you should come with to think about. And it's a bit different for you because it's for them. It's like the first real like trade event for them from what I'm seeing, right? Is that right and saying? Correct, yeah. What should they think about coming into something like this? Um, should they treat it like any other trade show? Is there anything they should look to take away from it? What do you think a good plan would be for, let's just say, an HVAC company coming here? Absolutely. So, you know, the, the beauty of what we're creating is, you know, a lot of people do certain events that are really catered to a specific category, right? So, hey, this is the biggest conference for HVAC, biggest conference for roofing. Arts is the biggest conference for entrepreneurs. And, and in essence, most of the Latin market is in the blue collar space. So that's our main focus, of course. So, you know, the beauty of what they're going to learn Aside from, you know, like basic stuff, it's, you know, let's say I do 10 million, right, in, in sales, but I really want to learn about a certain aspect that I've never touched that kind of got my interest, you know, whether it's real estate investment or one of my buddies, actually, his name's Rene Rodriguez. He's really big on social media. He, uh, he studies neuroscience and psychology on how to amplify your voice, your posture, your human features as a leader in business. And, you know, certain stuff like that, whether do you want to fix your public speaking? Do you want to understand research and development and employee retention credits and taxes? Do you want to understand property management? Do you want to understand how to run a CRM system? Do you want to understand content marketing? There's so much information around it that makes it so beautiful. So it's not just one specific nectar. It, yeah. You know, it's a little bit of, about everything. Okay. So they can just come in there with an open mind and be like, all right, I'm just going to absorb mind I'm mind about today. Exactly. That's an open mind. And that's the beauty of it, too, because a lot of these conferences, not to bash on anyone, but they'll have like 200, 300 vendors. And it's the people speaking the same shit back to back. And you just get tired of it. You know, yeah. this, this is so much knowledge on different sectors that you're like, well, I didn't even know I was going to learn about this. But now I'm intrigued now. You know, yeah. I'm and from uh, even like the presentation, I know that I'm going to give when we're down there. Where mm -hmm. It's not all, it's not salesy. It's like to help people grow. Right. And help them hit their goals. So stop grow your business, know your numbers, that kind of thing. So you're not going to like a show that's put on specifically just to make money for the showrunners, right? It's to help actually the community. Mm -hmm. and I think Absolutely. The yeah. Company, the only digital company, right? Uh, Yeah. 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 You guys will be the only one speaking. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And if they're business owners, they definitely get cold called by digital marketing companies every five minutes. So don't only have to deal with one where there's going to be a nice little uh, treat for them, I think. Yeah, um, no, it's it's going to be great. And I, I think that's the way to approach it, you know, just by educating. Yeah. So the educational side of it. Um, is there anything else we're missing that we should cover? Uh, in in terms of our speakers, I mean, we've, we've touched based on a lot of awesome people. We have Eric Lebersuter that's in real estate investment. We have Eric Wynn, who's a Purple Heart recipient. He's going to speak about mentality, overcoming obstacles. Yeah. We have Ryan Chance that is uh, Sumaco, which is an estimating company. We have Alan Mick that does content marketing. We have you guys, obviously you guys do digital marketing. We have Cristiano that's big on the in the marketing space as well, but he's going to speak more about his story, not really mm -hmm. the company, but I know more about you know his um, obstacles and overcoming them and being successful as an entrepreneur. We have obviously Esmel Valdez as well for HVAC, uh, Tommy Miller in the garage space. We have a couple other people as well that are going to be big in the roofing slash construction space. Yep. And, you know, we're, we're touching sectors on pretty much everything. It's going to be a great event. It's not your typical, you know, get up and walk around. It's, you know, all the information is going to be gathered in, the, in our main event. We'll have intermissions, breaks, and then people can obviously ask questions. And then if you signed up for our VIP event, you actually get to network and meet the speakers and sponsors and ask them more in-depth questions. And I think that's going to be a great opportunity to really put your foot into the door with certain people that you want to connect to. So our, our VIP event is June 27th from 8 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. So that's available for the Elite G8 holders and then the uh, VIP holders. Okay, awesome. And if I don't have tickets yet, if I'm somebody who's looking to come, where do I go to, to learn more about the event? Where do I go to learn more about you? What do I do? Absolutely. So if you want to learn more about the event and sign up, you go to www.americandreamevent.com. 
and you'll go to the landing page, you'll have all the information with our agenda, our speakers. And I believe we still have some early bird specials available as well. So definitely get those uh, locked in before they're all sold out. Awesome, man. And just to kind of wrap it up here, I don't want to eat your uh, your whole day up. What we do a thing here called the final war on the podcast. And for this one, I think a good idea would be is this event successful this year? It's going to be no doubt next year. We're looking to do it again. Right. Is this something that you're looking to have further down the line? Absolutely. The The main goal that we're trying to do with Telemundo is get this event once a year, but we're going to do a nice tour where we hit a lot of the different cities for people that couldn't make it. So we'll hit Dallas, we'll hit LA, we'll hit Phoenix, we'll hit um, Miami, Orlando. So, you know, we're definitely creating this for, for the long-term scale. So we're really excited to, to see what the five, 10 year plan kind of comes out to, but we're doing some really awesome things and we're excited to have you guys involved, man. Thank you. Unreal, dude. We're, we're really happy to be on the team here. Everybody out there, check out the American Dream event. Check out Steve Martinez if you don't know who he is already. Learn about him and what he's doing out there. And, Steven, it's been a pleasure today, man. I really look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, we'll see you. Take care.